YouTube. Uh, this is one of those days where I'm learning how to drive one of these electric scooters. I'm afraid I can't talk while I'm driving because I need to learn how to um, navigate this thing. So I'm going to get going. Hello world, I'm Maya Ryan and I'd like to welcome you to the latest episode of my vlog series. Uh, so far I've been able to share my own experiences on what it's like to live on the autistic spectrum. The second thing that I will do is give my two cents on autism in the media. The third area entails providing tips and advice for those of you who are on the spectrum as well as your friends, family members, peers, mentors, educators, employers. And finally, I will cover topics of uh, things that I'm passionate about in addition to doing day in the life type blogging. So please check me out. I tried this Lyft scooter for the first time and I wanted to give you my reviews of it. So first and foremost, it was my first time and it was wobbly. And number two, when you push this throttle, you can go really fast and that's fine. That being said, this is an area where there's lots of spaces and there really isn't a bike lane or anything. I mean, there are in the area, but there isn't a bike lane with little barriers up. I mean, there is right up there, but we need more of those uh, so that people don't run into things and other pedestrians via patrons because somebody could really get hurt and somebody could get a brain injury. Um, I don't mind learning to use these, but what I want to do is learn how to um, use those in a big park, like Piedmont right here in the greater Atlanta area, or maybe the um, Atlanta Beltline when there aren't lots of people around. Because I've heard stories of people that uh, rode those and rammed into a woman who was pregnant. And luckily her baby wasn't hurt, but with those scooters, you can really get hurt and you can hurt somebody else. And I was uh, scared to death on that thing. But I wasn't about to uh, get hurt. I mean, I've already been hit by a car before. and I don't think I've uh, told you that story before. So um, I'd be happy to talk about it now. So when I was about 31 years old, which was, uh, I don't know, uh, seven years ago now, my time flies. I uh, was carrying Thanksgiving dinner home or all the fixings for Thanksgiving dinner. And then I was going to have a group of people over. Um, it was gonna be my second time. I always do Thanksgiving dinner or Thanksgiving style dinner the day after on Black Friday because everybody's out shopping at the malls. So uh, I got a turkey that I could afford from Publix and I used to jaywalk on this one street and especially closer to my condo because uh, it was uh, because there were some really big Rottweilers and I just hear in the media about how when those dogs get a hold of you they can take you down and I've heard that they have actually killed people so I was afraid of these big dogs for um, a long time and I would jaywalk because I was afraid that they would chase me and so I thought if they saw me, the traffic on this road can be so crazy that maybe it would hit the dogs and then I wouldn't get hurt. Well, this one night, uh, the traffic was really heavy and I wasn't wearing very good shoes and wasn't paying attention to the road and the traffic was uh, heavy and I thought there was enough time for me to cross. Well, I get across and out of the middle of nowhere comes this car flying and he sees me too late and uh, next thing you know, I go flying. And um, I go flying and I'm hit, I, mean, I hit his car at least three or four times and I'm flying and all I can see is gray and I'm screaming, shouting Jesus name. That's how scared I was. Next thing you know, I land in the style of Wile E. Coyote and my first thought is, hey, get off the road. And so I try to get up, but I can't put any pressure on my left foot because my left ankle is twisted, but it's also, I think, broken. So I'm standing in the middle of the road screaming for help and nobody stops. And there's, there's my Thanksgiving uh, uh, dinner preparations all over. There's a hole in my bag. And so uh, 
My neighbors from across the street ask if I'm okay, and they get me back on the other side of the road and they have me lay down. Well, they get the police and the firemen out there, and one of my neighbors knows that I have, at that point, Asperger's syndrome, and he asks me if I'm okay. Well, <laughs> that being said, um, he knows I have Asperger's, and the police are asking me where the accident occurred, and I told the officer, and he goes, oh, so you've been jaywalking, and I said, yeah, that's because there's no crosswalk, and he said, don't yell at me, okay? So he was behaving like a little crybaby, and my uh, neighbors told him, relax, she has Asperger's syndrome. She puts her legs on, puts her pants on one leg at a time. Don't shame her. I mean, he didn't say it in those words, but he said that I have Asperger's. But seriously, I mean, I don't really feel that uh, my talking about the road and scolding that officer back about the, uh, about the crosswalk had anything to do with uh, my Asperger's. It was me expressing my concerns in response to him giving me a little lecture and thinking he's above me because he's uh, in law enforcement. And there are a lot of officers out there that do that. But at the same time, you do want to know, you do want to let law enforcement know that uh, you have Asperger's syndrome or autism because they need to know that. Not all of them are trained, unfortunately, but it helps. If you tell them that you have a medical condition and or you have somebody there to vouch for you, and sure, the officers may not care, but it's better to inform them. What do you guys think? Anyway, out of time for today. If you like what I'm doing, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Till next time, I'm Maya Ryan. I'm signing out. Bye.